that I'm lucky. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, we, haven't, we haven't played that three times. No, no, no. no, no. First time. First take. Bang on. Time. Okay, welcome to the Blues Box. And uh, today to the Palace of the King, as we're going to do an episode on the mighty Freddie King, or Texas Cannonball. Uh, one of my favourite, or one of our favourite mm, uh, blues yeah. artists, I think, actually, both as a yeah. guitar player and singer, I think. Before we go too much further, I'm going to have to ask you to turn oh. your amp off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Unless we want the whole thing to be all the way through. <laughs> there we go. Uh, cool. Are you well, going to say your... Uh, I, I might do. There you go. Yeah, I might do. It's going well so far. It's so, uh, yeah, th well, thanks for coming back to uh, the next episode of The Blues Box. Just like to ask you, please, to subscribe, to comment, to like, dislike, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, just... just do it. Um, say hello. Um, tell us what you want from the uh, from the episodes we've got yeah. coming up. But as you said, uh, Freddie King. This one. I've been looking forward to Freddie King. He's uh, sort of one of those real classic oh. artists I, I do Amazing. really like. And um, prior to the episode, I was doing quite a bit of digging uh, the live performances that oh. are out there of him. Yeah, some great ones on YouTube. Aren't oh, there? Really, really, yeah. really nice. Uh, sort of uh, just, just yeah. I, I, I don't know the, the bit of showmanship that he's yeah, got. Yeah. The, the sort of limited use, this might not be the right way of putting it, limited use of notes sometimes, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. but like repeating riffs and... Yeah, lots of nice little kind of, almost like a theme, something we're going to talk about, actually themed to some of his solos. Yeah, you've got little or, motifs that keep yeah, coming yeah, back, yeah. Uh, being used. Yeah. It, it is it's funny, isn't it, watching the videos of him on YouTube, how different a time it was. <laughs> yeah, it's, this is true. <laughs> but incredible performances, some quite... Carmelka ones, not in a bad way, but yeah. when you look at kind of modern music videos yeah, compared yeah, to them, yeah. you'll actually prefer the old yeah, ones like that. Yeah, it's straight, isn't it? Yeah, in a sense. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I really do like a, a bit of Freddie King, yeah, uh, I have incredible. to say. So, uh, just before we go into his style, yep. um, I was doing a little bit of digging on, on, his, on his equipment and how oh, he yeah. played, and the few things that stood out was unusual was his finger pick, his yeah. thumb pick and a finger pick, yeah. one of which was metal. Yeah, I think the thumb was plastic and the finger was metal. Yeah, so but that gave I'm sure that somebody will correct us. <laughs> they will. It's, they're typing Fine. now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, um, you've got to be careful with metal picks. You end up with oh. big marks on your guitar. But it yeah. gets that sort of very aggressive attack, doesn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. that's one of the things that kind of drew me to him. Yeah. I, mean, I use my pick and fingers all the time. Um, partly to make up for deficiency in my picking mm. speed, possibly. <laughs> Compared to some people, yeah. but uh, I love the attack you get when you oh, do that, and, it's and amazing. he really it's had that. Very, very it was good. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was that. And the other thing that surprised me, I mean, he's he's well known for playing a, a three four five. Yep. Gibson three four five with the variatone. Yeah, which I don't understand. No. <laughs> that like, won't surprise you. I feel like a bunch of preset EQs. Okay. Uh, and I think, to be honest, they mostly don't get used by most people who own one of those guitars, but. He did used to use a couple of the mid positions quite right. a lot, apparently. And he has got a quite a distinctive tone. Um, yeah, he has. Big Fender, sort of, I think it was, no, not 100%, got a bit blank. There's some. Careful what you say, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm going to say, you know the amplifier that he used, the same sort. Tell us what it was. Pop it in the comments. Um, yeah, and then I don't look like a complete idiot. <laughs> Better to be thought a fool and to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So there we go. So. Um, <laughs> But and another one, Mark, Mark, guitarist I love, Marcus King uses the same guitar, uh, same with that thing. Tone. And he said he doesn't, <laughs> never touches it. So. Yeah, so it's basically a 335 with that variatone yeah. circuitry built in. Yeah, yeah. But Les Paul Goldtop actually mm. was where he kind of started out as well. Pretty uh, much my two dream guitars. Les Paul Goldtop for me uh, with P90s in. Yeah. That would, that would be. Um, very nice. Mm. We're going off topic. Oh, very. I'm there now. <laughs> I, I'm just, oh, maybe with a Bigs B on it. Oh, we've definitely going off topic now. Really have, yeah. I, I just like, there's a tonality you get with the big speed. Like. Yeah. Anyway, that really is off topic. So, <clears throat> yeah, so stylistically, yep. um, his approach, how, how would you sort of... Well, so if I tell you how I kind of discovered Freddie King, not mm -hmm. discovered him, you know what I mean? How I, I came... He was already discovered. <laughs> he was already discovered. That's a bit like Christopher Long Columbus, before I was uh, born, yeah. Discovering America. <laughs> um, I was late, kind of late 80s, major big hair rock fan when I was just starting to learn the guitar, I guess. But I... Bought this album by a Canadian singer guitarist called Jeff Healy, who I yeah. absolutely still love to this day. Uh, the album's called See the Light. So for anyone new to blues who hasn't seen Jeff Healy, go and watch him play, and then you'll probably want to throw your guitar out the window. <laughs> yeah, it can have one or two effects, yes. can't it? Hopefully it'll inspire you, not yeah, the other way around. Inspire or give up. But on that um, on that record, the last I think it was the last track possibly on it was uh, an instrumental called Hideaway, mm -hmm. which 
yeah. I thought it was Jeff Healy's song, you know, that, yeah. that brief moment, but quickly yeah. discovered it was by Freddie King. Um, and interestingly, it was something that Freddie King was known for, was yeah. his instrumentals. His instrumentals, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and funny enough, when I, I did a little more digging, and yeah, I, you know, I, I'd listened to a fair bit of Freddie King, but I didn't mm. realise just how big the instrumental part yeah. of what he did was. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was quite unusual for the Is that for the what time. made him maybe less popular than others? The fact, you know, it was... I don't know, he certainly seemed to struggle... Again, I'm not going to... Statistics you will get corrected on, but I think it was one of the major blues labels that he couldn't get signed to for quite right. a while. Whether that was, I don't know, anything yeah, to do with it, or obviously B.B. King and Albert King were fairly yeah, <laughs> a big yeah. deal as well, but um, mm. still a very successful career nonetheless. Mm. And um, from what I've read, an incredibly constantly gigging, constantly touring mm. as well, which I think was... I think that's a bit of a more of an old school musician anyway, Maybe. isn't it? That's yeah. kind of how they used to make it, was just constantly, yeah. constantly playing and touring. And that's why they were so good. Mm. They were playing all the times, all oh. the times in the smaller clubs, you know, and yeah. sometimes to hardly an audience. We know, we've done that. Oh, we've been there, done that. Yeah, we've played <laughs> For different reasons. different ends of the <laughs> spectrum. Yeah, but um, yeah. no, brilliant, okay. Yeah, so I thought maybe we'd have a little look at Hideaway, just a tiny yeah, part yeah. of it, and see yeah. what we can learn from that, uh-huh. um, as it had pretty big effect on my guitar playing what I learned from that I think you know so all right we'll get set up for that we'll do that and then we'll have another little bit of a a waffle okay all right brilliant Yeah, so that's a classic, isn't it, really, of his? Yeah, it was. Um, and I, the, the thing that kind of that stood out to me, it was probably what started getting me really yeah. into blues when I discovered, well, I found Freddie King. I was kind of listening to Steve Ray Vaughan, yeah. Different Beast. Um, you know what I'm going to say now, don't you? Of what? I'm going to play in a second. Yes, right. Oh, OK, all right, then leave it on then. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to me. No. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's my I'm gen- just generally my motto. <laughs> it's not you who sits there in front of the computer editing out all the buzzes and hisses and things for hours, turning it up and down. So I'm naturally slightly paranoid. That is that. your That's my reason punishment be. for being good at tech. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> anyway. That's why I'm here. Um, so, yeah, I'd say it's Freddie King that kind of got me into proper traditional older blues okay. um, not that Stevie Ray Vaughan wasn't that but obviously no, it's uh, a, yeah. kind of more modern sounding in a way yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the things that stood out to me straight away was you mentioned earlier was there was like a theme to his solos yep. a lot of them particularly the instrumentals so yep. uh, that little repetitive <laughs> which kind of crops up over and over again yeah, yeah, yeah. and I found that kind of it was really easy not easy to copy um, to come up with anything that was as memorable as that, but the fact that I just had to find one little lick and then repeat that through you my solo that would work yeah. on each chord. Well, it gives it gives a, that motif, doesn't it? Yeah. That repeating motif. Similarly, you get in you know classical music, it reappears in different yeah. places. I suppose yeah. you know. Not that I listen to a huge amount of classical <laughs> music, but you know you do get that repetitive nature, and and you know well, like, say blues has a certain boundary, mm-hmm. but that gives each track its own yeah. flavor, each song its own. You know, feel. Yeah, and I think poss- possibly why that part of his playing was so successful is it's very easy to remember. It's yeah. very catchy. Yeah, it's a good hook. You can, yeah, you it can, is a hook. Yeah, yeah. you know it. Don't um, you? One of my favourites of his that I discovered after that was called Just Picking, um, which if I can kind of remember. <laughs> Same leg for each chord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which I think, again, if you're hopefully there are people who are starting their kind of blues journey or learning the guitar will watch this. And I find that a really good way to build mm-hmm. my kind of library of licks, if you like. Yeah. So I would take a very simple lick. And 
them for the last chord. Yeah. Because obviously the first two, they've got something in common with yeah, the chords, yeah, you need yeah, to adjust yeah. it slightly. But that in itself was a real eye opener for me. Yeah, you know, that no, that's excellent. Making me think about the chords a bit yeah. more, you know. So we're going to put a chunk episode out with a little bit of yeah. Freddie King, aren't we? So yeah. keep an eye out for that. We we've got a separate playlist for the the chunks, for the bits, the bite size learning. And that's where um, Steve will break down an intro or a part of mm -hmm. a song just a little bit more. Take your time, have a look at it, and just, like you were saying, adding to your repertoire. Yeah, definitely. Um, and particularly, I guess, when you're starting off, there may be some of the, if you listen to some of the stuff that Joe Bonamassa plays, there's some pretty tricky Josh Smith, there's some difficult stuff in there. Yeah. Um, but some Freddie's of, not like easy, is he? No, it's cer no it's certainly you know? not easy, but it's that way that you can almost feel like with only a couple of licks, you can still sit in and mm -hmm. you can still jam along with people yeah. Yeah. and not need to feel terrified <laughs> if you've only got I, I, a few licks. Do you know I enjoy playing? Really. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's yeah, part yeah. of it. So it's getting yeah. a few... I, we talked a little while ago, you were saying that, you know, sometimes there's this illusion that everything's improvised on the spot, yeah. but actually it's a massive toolkit. Of course it is. It's a bag of tricks yeah, that you is. keep dipping into. Because when things are going along, you know, <laughs> the brain can only do so much sometimes. Yeah. And you think, right, where, where do I need to come out? And I can bring that out, I can bring that out. So, you know, I work in the creative industry. Mm -hmm. I am a creative, Steve. So, Who are you? Yeah, apparently. Uh, so, <laughs> allegedly. I don't know what that uh, is. Reportedly. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, you have to input. Yeah. It's, uh, to output something new, fresh, it's different, go it's got to go in in the first place. Yeah. So it's a really good way of, you know, like you're saying, there's little ideas that you can pull out of that bag. And, and Freddie's good for yeah, that. Yeah, and take those licks and just put a little twist on Spin it. Spin it, yeah, yeah. Way. You know, and there's nothing, yeah. you know, if somebody says that sounds like Freddie King, well, that's a good thing. That's not yeah, a bad yeah. thing. You want to you wanna no, sound absolutely. like the great... I mean, when you and I play exactly the same riff, it sounds different. Yeah, we phrase it uh, Obviously, different. mine sounds so much better than yours. <laughs> of course. Uh, of course. It's way up there. But do you not doubt that for a second? <laughs> but you, you've... Got a, you've got a distinctive style. I yeah. have, I think, yeah. a style. Mm -hmm. you, people may not like it, but um, it's there. And it's just, you know what I mean? And I can recognise it in myself now as well. So that's... Yeah, you know, I think uh, kind of going back to, to Jeff Healy and then Steve Ray Vaughan, when I then went back and started listening to Freddie King and BB King and then carried on listening to Steve Ray Vaughan, I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> that's, yeah, where that that's where that comes from. Came you know? from yeah. There's a great... Yeah. Um, track, believe it or not, called Mary Had a Little Lamb, which Steve Ray Vaughan done, which was actually okay. a buddy... It's not boding well. I no, it's not, the it? title like It's that. an it's... amazing track, though. It's a buddy guy track. And actually, when I heard it, I thought, oh, OK, because it's very, very yeah. similar to Just Picking. Yeah. So it's obviously, they've obviously gone back. Of course, they have, and listened to all of those greats. You know, Do you know I've so. got a memory of a, of a guy in a convertible car uh, going down the roads, playing like a really hefty sort of rap um, house track, you know. <laughs> And uh, the guy then, it's blaring out and he's trying to look seriously cool. <laughs> and the next line that came out of the, the rapper's mouth was Mary had a little Seriously? Rap. Yeah. All and at that point, me and my mate walking, we just looked at him and we just started laughing because it just <laughs> was so stupid. It was said as well, it was wrapped with such passion. Well, actually, and, um, you know, very similar story then, yeah. okay, to that. It did young uh, girl, Rianne, that I used to teach years ago, very good young blues guitarist, and she loved Steve Ray Vaughan. I remember going to a gig of hers when she was about 18 and being in the audience there were kind of a bunch of obviously what were punk and metal fans yeah. and they saw this young girl on stage and uh, they were, you know, they weren't making the nicest of comments, let's put it that way. And then she announced the song she was going to play was called Mary Had a Little Lamb. And of course, They're just like, yeah. and then she played it and yeah. not a peep. No, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the reverse, isn't it? Yeah, just, it yeah, is, yeah. yeah. So, Brilliant. Yeah, so go back and listen to that track. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Are we going to play out with something? Or yeah, so uh, we're going to do, um, obviously, Freddie King is responsible for many blues standards. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of uh, a solo over I'm Tore Down, which okay. is a song you should right. definitely check out if you don't know it already. All right, I'm going to reach you okay. and we'll get set up for that. Brilliant. Brilliant. 